Hey, my Facebook friends. I have been praying about this message for the last week. I've been talking to Holy Spirit about it, asking him for wisdom to give me the right words that you will not only catch what I'm trying to say, but you will also get an impartation in what I'm trying to say. And so I'm just going to jump in and expect him to do what he does so well. And I want to talk to you about the difference between poverty mindset, wealth, and chasing fantasies. You know, the Bible says that he who chases fantasies has poverty waiting for him. And we live in a world that is so dramatically different than when I started my very first business. Many times it's very alarming to me and I even have to remind myself, oh, that's right. If I talk to a couple hundred thousand of you like I typically do every week here on Facebook Live, you're going to most times have different programming, different mindsets than people did 20 to 21 years ago when I started my first business. You know, when I was a single mom making $5,000 per year, one thing that my daddy just implanted and blueprinted on my mind was this. Don't take a handout look for a hand up. He taught me from the time I was very young, don't look for things that are free, but look for how you can improve yourself. And so in a day and age when people are looking for somebody to cover them, somebody to give them a free handout, somebody to give them something for nothing. I want to speak into this apostolically. I want to speak into this powerfully. And you might misunderstand a few words that I'm going to say initially. So I'm going to ask you to give me grace and just hang on till the end of the broadcast. The first thing I want to say to you, my first point is working hard brings a reward. And so one of the reasons that I did not want to have a ton of things for free when I was a single mom, you know, I went from being a single mom living on $5,000 per year to building a multi-million dollar business within just a few years. I did not have a mentor. I was completely self-taught and I believed God when he said, I could be anything I wanted to be, but I never expected things for nothing. I did not, I understood the understanding of spiritual inheritance, but I didn't expect God to put new on top of my head simply because I received Jesus as my savior and was walking in the Holy Spirit. What I did believe is when I put forth an effort, he was going to multiply like the Bible teaches. When I put forth an effort to understand things, he was gonna help me retain things better. When I put forth an effort, to apply things, he was going to give me strategy to apply things in such a new way that I would get a greater result. And he did. He was so faithful through that. Have I had trials? Yes. Have I lost money? Absolutely. Have I made mistakes? You betcha. But you see, I was groomed with don't ask for anything for free, but be willing to work hard and remember the reward of hard work. Remember that God gives you favor. Remember that God is with you and he's never, ever failed me. Now, you see, we live in a day and age where, where people are judging the rich. And if you're trying to build a business and you're judging the rich, I'm just going to encourage you to repent now because the wealthy Apart from people who like have ridiculous inheritances and all that, and if you study the wealthy, very few are that, but people who work from the bottom up are usually very, very generous. They're the ones who are giving the most to nonprofits. They're usually the ones who are creating the most jobs. It's really interesting to me because small businesses historically, don't take my word for it, go on Google and type in the and search small businesses stats for creating new jobs. In America, small businesses create more jobs than even corporations do. And there's something very strategic about a small business, small office, home office, solo entrepreneur who got to pull themselves up through difficulty and learn things. Every time you fall on your face and you get back up as an entrepreneur or as anybody who's trying to better themselves, you acquire a strength that is so much more sustainable than if somebody just said, here, 
Let me just change your life for free. As a matter of fact, this is proven when we see people who win the lottery. They, sorry, the sun is shining in. They win the lottery and before we know it, the studies show that more than 90% of people who win the lottery are bankrupt. Why? Because they didn't learn the process of not only how to earn an income, how to multiply an income, how to sustain an income, but how to take care of that income. A lot of them start complaining because they got a big lottery and the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, oh my God, all the money they're going to lose because they have to pay taxes. Well, welcome to the great land that we live in. You have to pay taxes. Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is due him. But why don't you get a little bit of information, Mama's going to say, he's going to say, so that you don't have to pay as many taxes because the tax system, system is actually made for corporations and you've got to understand things on how to manage it. You see, you work hard for a reward. And number two, I'm, I'm telling you, the biggest truth I want to impart to you today is you don't lack money. You lack information. What happened to me when I was a single mom making $5,000 per year and I was self-taught and within just a couple of years built a kitchenware business online without any experience. I didn't even know what the flip I was doing online. But I studied and I studied and I applied and I activated and I made a bunch of mistakes and I asked for help and I asked for people to do things I couldn't do. How did I do that? Because my information and my experience and my knowledge increased. Not because all of a sudden I stepped out to do a website and I said, Lord, I'm your favorite child. Just rain down on me money. I did not build a business and say, money cometh to me. Like you hear a bunch of entitled believers say, no. I did say, though, God, bring me the right people that I need. I asked him, give me a... Um, a photographic memory so that when I'm studying and learning things, I don't forget them. Teach me, God, how to retain what I'm learning. Teach me how to apply things in a way that every hour I spend in my business multiplies like it's five hours. And he honored me. I was groomed with don't look for things that are free, but work hard and look for strategies to work not only smarter, but to do things in such a way that you're aligned with. So many small business owners are trying to build their business and they're trying to do something they're not even innately wired for. They heard from their friend, it's a great way to make money. They saw all these different stories about this person and that person who made money, but they don't even take any time to realize, how have I been wired? How did God wire me? What are my instinctive qualities and my gifts, talents, and abilities? Because when you walk in your gifts, talents, and abilities, wealth will follow you. And as a matter of fact, you'll think even better. So you don't lack money, you lack information. And that's one of the things that I'm so passionate about. We've got tens of thousands of dollars in free training on our website. Tens of thousands of dollars. And people still will say to me, I don't have any money to start a business. Well, I didn't have any money to start a business either. I even have a video on my Facebook page here in the video archive. I told you how. Step by step. I started my business without any money. People still say to me, yeah, but things have always come super easy for you. And I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't have any money. And I don't have a supportive spouse. And I don't have a supportive family. I did not have a supportive family either. My spouse wasn't supporting me either. He was the biggest negative gnarly mind in my head when I started my very first business. I had no money. I had no Thing going for me and if you think things went easy for me you don't know my life when I set out to start my own business I had a history of being sexually molested when I was a little girl I was gang raped in my 20s as a matter of fact most people drove me bonkers because they weren't safe <laughs> and so I had so many things against me that you don't and as a matter of fact I had knowledge lacking that you don't because you see, when I started my business 20 years ago, the information age had not dispensed to us all the information that's out there right now. A boom is right, Jennifer. The amount of information that was out there for free was nothing like that is out there now. Unfortunately, what happens is small business owners have been groomed for laziness and entitlement, and they don't understand the hunt hunting for what you need, hunting in front of a computer, hunting, taking notes, researching, praying over your mind, overcoming your own doubt, overcoming your own fears, getting up when you fail, get up when people judge you, get up when people persecute you, making better decisions, learning from your mistakes. They hate it. The first time something goes wrong, they're like, this just isn't cut out for me. Uh, 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 that's not what I did. And so I never wanted anything that came for free. I realized that I did not lack money. I actually lacked knowledge. And even to this day, even though I've made millions of dollars, even though God took me from bringing a single mom to being a millionaire, 
I still seek wisdom. I still seek information. I seek how to apply the wisdom and how to keep a high quality of life and how to stay holy in a business world where people are not holy and their ethics and their morality are so distorted it's hard to even think right sometimes. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is the difference between wealth redistribution and wealth I wrote it down, transfer. You know, the world teaches us wealth redistribution. Basically, the big guy ought to help the little guy out because the little guy is a victim and the big guy got to hand it to him. That is a bunch of bullshit talkie from the pit of hell. That's like saying we ought to share GPAs. I saw a video the other day that said that, oh, why don't you try wealth distribution in high school? Okay, all of you that got a 4.0, I need you to feel better and feel sorry for those who got a 2.0 and who were slacking off and who were partying and smoking pot, not paying attention in class and not taking notes. And you need to give some of your 2.0, your 4.0 to those who got a 2.0 because we want an equal opportunity. Well, I'm telling you, the opportunity is equal. But the wherewithal to push beyond your own doubts and your own fears and your own issues and your own lifestyle that is where it's not, it's, it's, it's not going to come up equal because now you're getting into free will. Now you're getting into the realm where God says, I have put before you choose. Now you're getting into the realm where Jesus said one was given one talent and one was given 10 talents. Jesus knew ahead of time what they were wired with. Jesus knew ahead of time what they would do. It's not that he favored one and gave him 10 talent and gave one one talent. The one who had one talent could have trumped and made 10 talents easy. But the one with one talent started whining and ragging. You're so hard. Things are so hard hard for me. I know you're a hard task master. So I took what you gave me and I hid it. Kind of reminds me of people who look at people who pull themselves up out of the muck, up out of their own mess, up out of their own sin, up out of their own story. And some people go, everything's just so easy for you. You just don't understand. My life is so bad. I need to figure out how I can get free things because that's apparently how they got it because life is just not fair. No. And I'm going to tell you what, this is going to be a political statement and some of you just love me anyway. You don't want wealth distribution. You know why? Redistribution. Because the only thing the government's going to give you is something to support poverty. Why would the government support poverty? Because when you're broke and full of fear, you're easier to control. So, you know what? I was a single mom taking WIC coupons, living on welfare, living on hardly nothing, living on $5,000 per year, and I did not want free handouts because I knew it would facilitate me staying stuck. It was not going to help me. It was hardly going to help me getting by. And as a matter of fact, it's so funny because you get to a certain income and they say, we're taking it all away. It supports poverty. You want to wealth redistribute? Then why don't you go into these impoverished communities and teach them? Give them free education. Get business owners over there helping them to think differently. But what's interesting is, you know what? When Even when I was stuck as a single mom making $5,000 per year, 90% of my family was jealous. 90% of the people around me were like, how did you change your life like that? You must have had a handout. That ain't fair. Did you see how much I was struggling? You only had one kid. I got three. How is that fair? And I was sitting here thinking, what? I'll tell you what, Johnny. The rich get richer because they got more information than the people who don't. The rich don't get richer by robbing the poor. That is ludicrous. That is stupid. And even in physics and common sense, it doesn't work. Here's the deal. When you judge the rich, you're actually causing your own life to not prosper because what you're basically saying is my boss is an idiot and I don't want my job. That basically my boss should stop sharing and I don't want my job. When you judge the rich, what's so interesting, the Bible never talks about the rich getting richer because they robbed the poor. But it talks about something that the government isn't going to mention, and most of the pastors nowadays ain't going to even bring up because it doesn't make them popular. It's called faithfulness. 
I'm telling you, I'm telling you, people say to me, how did you go from $5,000 per year to building a million dollar business? Because I stayed faithful to what God was saying in my ear and my heart and I ignored my critics, even my ex-husband, even families, even people who judged me, even pastors who judged me and thought I was doing something I shouldn't be doing when I knew I was doing what God had called me to do. Stay faithful to what the Lord has put in front of you. When I felt oppressive in the areas I was in, I was willing to relocate. When I felt like I couldn't like build my business and live with what we currently had around us, downsized. But so many people don't want to go through that discomfort because they want handouts. They believe that the reason they lack is because somebody stole from them. That's not true. And actually, that kind of thinking needs to be removed from the face of the planet. That's a victim mindset. It's so funny how it's perpetrated by the government. Because like I said, the government would prefer you stay broke and stay stupid because you're easier to control. Because as soon as you start making money on your own, all of a sudden other parts of your brain start thinking and you think of other ways to help people and you think of other ways to think of everything. You start thinking of new strategies in your business and all of a sudden you start thinking, well, maybe I could raise my kids differently simply because I got a better idea than the experts. Maybe I could do this over here with my finances differently because I got a different idea than the experts. Now, all of a sudden, it's not rebellion. You actually start getting really creative and really strategic and thinking in a way that's very different. You don't lack money, my friends. You lack information. And there's so much information out there for you for free. We take our classes, which is so interesting, the government has to protect us from greed. I don't know what Bible you're reading, Johnny, but the last time I checked, the stronghold of greed tends to sit on the hill of the government. But anyway, and I'm not against government. I'm, a, I'm for godly government. God created three different entities of government in the world, my friends. Government in the world, government in the church, and government in the home. But it's never to be suppressive. It's never to hold people back. It's never to hold people back. It's never to take a certain group of people and rain all kinds of stuff on them and take another group of people and judge them. It's equal opportunity for all, but when you get into free will, people don't like equal opportunity for all because quite frankly, the last time I checked, the Bible says it's in the fruit. The fruit doesn't lie. The fruit tells you the roots. And thank God we can change our roots. Thank God your roots can be replanted. Thank God your seeds that have been put into your mind and your mindset and your family history don't even have to be what you end up as. Thank God that if you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, all things come new and your bloodline and your family history and the seeds that were spoken over you and the words that were spoken over you in your past, none of that has any authority to hold you back. The only thing that can hold you back is your own decision with your free will. So the three lessons I gave you today were this. Don't ask for something for free. Work hard and walk in your reward and give it time. Today's generation, because of the speed of the internet and social media and whatever, they want everything now. You apply for a stinking loan and you make $50,000 a year and they freaking approve you for a $200,000 loan. What is wrong with this program? When I was raised, we were told, you don't go get a house loan that's more than one week of your income. But of course, the lenders want you what? In bondage. Why? Because when you're in bondage, you're in fear. And when you're in fear, you're easier to control. But that was for free. The interesting thing is, is learning when you start making an income and how to live without debt and how to even manage some debt appropriately. So many people live today with a mindset that this is, this is where I'm going to be forever. Well, if that was the case, you'd never know me. You'd never see my pink hair and my big blabby mouth on Facebook if that was the case because I would have still been a single mom. And I would still be getting with coupons and I would have never gotten on the internet. And I probably would have killed myself by now because seriously, I'm not saying that sarcastically. I had a spirit of suicide and anxiety that was so bad. It was like a drug addiction. Literally, I had to be set free from more than most of you have no clue what it's like to have that kind of massive debt and massive oppression and not a good word around you. You know why God, I believe, lets me use the internet? Because when there wasn't no good word around me and my personal circle of influence, I went on the internet and God brought people to me. And today I'm now one of those people who comes to you who might have nobody around you. Don't look for something for free. Remember the reward of hard work. 
You don't lack money, you lack information. I dare you to challenge me on that one. And what's so interesting to me, I saw Mr. Wonderful from the Shark Tank do an interview and it was like so stellar. And he said, what's so interesting is you put money in the hands of the government and you end up getting more oppressed. You put money in the hands of a small business owner and jobs are created. Well, that was a simple equation. The third one is wealth redistribution and wealth transfer are completely, completely different. It's very interesting to me, and one of my friends is even talking about responding to situations in the flesh and responding in the spirit. You know what's even nice? I spent years responding in the flesh, and I had fruit to prove it. And when I start responding in the spirit, like God is so sinking generous and gracious that when I would respond in the spirit, like he would overcome and overwhelm all of my responding in the flesh. He is such a good daddy. So I want to encourage you. He who chases fantasies has poverty waiting for him. But he who is willing to be faithful and work hard and stay holy in a situation that is corrupt, immoral, and unethical will have a reward waiting for them. The person who doesn't look for a handout but is willing to go the extra mile will have a, hand, will have a reward waiting for them. The person who understands, I don't lack money, I just lack information. So now I'm going to seek where the information is. I'm going to ask God where the information is. And I'm going to do something with the information. Because it's so interesting, Ecclesiastes said, with the increase of knowledge comes what? Pride. You get puffed up. If you don't do something with your knowledge, you're going to get, in Sandy's loose paraphrase, full of yourself. So do something with the knowledge. And the third one is, don't look for a wealth redistribution. No! It supports more poverty. Look for a wealth transfer. What did Jesus say? He said, you who were faithful with little, give them more. The one who had five talents, the one who had 10 talents were multiplied and they were given even more because they did their very best. And I love it in God's economy. Your very best might be different than my very best. The fruit of your very best might be very different than the fruit of my very best, but God's going to reward us both because he knows what our very best is. He understands our weaknesses. He takes into consideration our weaknesses and he trumps it with his strength. And I'm telling you, it just makes me want to do a dance for him because he is gracious. He is kind. I have proved him like the psalmist has said over and over and over again. And people who tell me, oh, just build your businesses and don't. Don't start talking about Jesus. I'm sorry, I can't stop talking about Jesus because I don't know how to build a business without him. And I believe that God wants people set free so that we can encourage others, so that we can walk with our own free will and change things. It's time for people to start doing some territorial changes, to start doing some transformation in industries and on mountains of influence and in their, no, their own neighborhood. And that starts with you. It doesn't start with, oh God, just give me everything I need and then I'll walk it out. No, it's God, I'm willing to walk through the mud with you. I'm willing to walk through the poop with you. I'm willing to walk through the misunderstandings with you. I'm willing to overcome my own doubt. And God, when I feel like I want to quit, I'm going to run to you and I'm not going to quit. So that's a word for some of you. He who chases fantasies has poverty waiting for him. But the one who will be faithful to the end, there's a just reward. And I guarantee you, it ain't just in heaven. Don't believe that kind of re religious theology that says, all the rewards are in heaven, and when you live here, it's just time to survive in hell. That's from religion. And also, don't have a, uh, what is that word? Um, oh, Jesus, what is that word? Where people actually believe everything here in the world is like just a mess and so you might as well just wait till you get to heaven when things get better that's another lie from the pit of hell and for those of you who are wanting yeah i'm a business owner i built over 20 companies go to a real change.com and you can see me go type my name into google you're gonna find pages and pages and pages here's the deal no i don't own a church and yes i'm never going to stop talking about jesus because as far as i know when god brings heaven into my earthly realm Everything I do has been changed. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.